Welcome to the Arse End of Sydney. It's a far cry from the Harbour Bridge and Opera House and you won't find this in the Lonely Planet Guide. You're looking at the Ampol Oil Terminal in Port Botany and this is where our little railway adventure begins. And I guess you've never been here before and if this is your first time here, and I mean not literally here but to my channel, then my name is Paul and I will be your virtual guide. So we're going to travel up the Botany Goods Line from just here in Port Botany to Marrickville Junction where it ends and then continue to just beyond Dulwich Hill Station. And to help you get your bearings, the Sydney Harbour Bridge is here with Sydney CBD immediately to the south. Sydney trains lines are marked in orange with light rail in green and freight only lines in this dirtiest yellow colour. Now as a lucky treat, I got to travel on the Botany Goods Line on board a CPH rail motor that is almost 100 years old and I waited eagerly on this platform at Central Station to get the best seat, which is right at the back of the train so that I would get the driver's eye view when it reversed at Port Botany. And it reversed just east of this level crossing close to Penryn Road. This is the view of this crossing from the back of the train. Beyond this crossing, the tracks bend to the right and then split into two sidings. The northern sidings serve the Hutchison Botany Terminal, this is Port Botany's newest dock and was built on reclaimed land. It opened in 2014. Next to this are the Patrick Terminals and these are served by the aptly named Patrick Sidings. And you can see this terminal clearly from the back of this train. Then on the other side of the water is the DP World Terminal and it's served by the, you guessed it, the DP World Sidings. DP World also have a logistics centre close to Botany Road and this also has some sidings. So as a reminder, the CPH rail motor is here and it's time to jump on board. So this is the start of our journey on the Botany Goods Line, which I'm going to call the Botany Line for the remainder of this video. And we're now moving. Our train is on the Arrival Road 1 track. The track next to it in the middle is Departure Road 1 and to the right of that is Departure Road 2. And as we say goodbye to the Ampol oil terminal, I couldn't help noticing that each oil tank is individually numbered and judging by the gaps in the numbering, it looks like a few have been scrapped. The two lines now appearing on the right are the approach tracks from the DP World sidings. And on the left is a ground signal displaying a yellow aspect. This is the one that gave this train the right to proceed. The DP World tracks are now joining and the track from DP World Logistics is now visible in the distance. Now from the back of the train, for a better view of the DP World approach tracks and this looks like the control tower for their container port. And now on the left is the DP World Logistics Centre and its two access tracks that merge into one before joining this line. Notice the back of the large port botany sign. The bridge coming into view takes this rail corridor under the busy botany road. And this turnout is set for departure road 1, so that's where we're heading. So now on Departure Road 1, with Arrival Road 1 on the left and Departure Road 2 on the right. And it's interesting to see road style street lighting on this rail corridor. That's something you don't normally see. At this turnout here, a new track verges off to the left. This is Arrival Road 2. All these containers that you can see on the left are within the Toll Intermodal Centre. This front of train footage was filmed on Monday the 2nd of October 2023 and the back of train and side view footage was from the day before. At the time of recording, work was taking place to duplicate the single track section and you'll see lots of this work a little later. 
This CPH rail motor trip was organised as part of the Transport Heritage Expo that took place over this long October weekend. A new siding has appeared on the left with this wagon on it. This is called the Breakdown Siding. Interesting name. I hope it doesn't get used too often. And this breakdown siding is now joining a rival road too. Our journey so far has been quite leisurely, but we will speed up soon. The rail corridor is now gently bending to the left, and on the right are some more tracks that are coming to join us. And these tracks come from the old Botany Yard, which has three sidings. And these sidings are behind this container train, which is being hauled by three UGL Rail C44 ACI locomotives. And once in front of these locos, the old Botany Yard comes into view, with all sidings in use on this day. Now back at the front, and you can see the approach tracks from these sidings, and they are now merging together to become one line. And this single line will shortly join the departure road 2 track. And here is our next signal, and it's displaying a yellow aspect with a number 2 indicator. I wonder what that might mean. Now up ahead are a series of turnouts to enable trains, including those from Old Botany Yard, to switch tracks. Over on the right is the Botany Industrial Park, which covers over 60 hectares, and it's been around since the 1940s. More on this in a moment. This next turnout allows trains to switch to arrival road 1, but I reckon it might be used more for departing trains in the future, for reasons that will become more apparent soon. And then this turnout connects arrival road 1 to arrival road 2, and the arrival road 2 track feeds into what will become the new northbound line, and again this will make more sense soon. The Botany Industrial Park continues on the right, and this was originally owned by Orica, the former ICI Australia, but in 1998 it was subdivided, so now there are a few different companies operating there. As this section is dead straight and a bit boring, I'll talk a little more about the Botany Line duplication project and why it's needed. The amount of container freight handled by Port Botany was 14.4 million tonnes in 2016, and this is projected to increase by 77% to 25.5 million by 2036. Now the current 3km single line section limits capacity to around 20 trains per day in each direction, and adding the second track will allow capacity to more than double, to around 45 trains per day, and it will massively improve reliability as well. And this will encourage a shift from road to rail, with one container train able to carry the same number of containers as 54 trucks. John Holland are the main contractors for this work, and it's due to be completed in late 2024. The cost is around 400 million, and it's being funded by the Australian government. This area is in the suburb of Banks Meadow, and this white building on the left is a commercial office block. So far, I've not noticed a single residential property. Have you seen any? And here is another ground signal, which is also displaying a yellow aspect. So although progress is slow, at least we haven't had to stop yet. And that signal is for the junctions up ahead. And this is where the current four tracks are going to become two. So our train has just joined the Arrival Road 1 track, and on the left is the Arrival Road 2 track, which as I mentioned earlier has kind of become the new northbound line. And this track has been replaced recently, and the reason for this was to remove an old turnout to the disused Kellogg sidings that used to be about here. And this is how these old sidings looked on the map. The Kellogg's plant is still in use, so now you know where your breakfast might have come from. And the sidings and approach tracks were in this area. So now in view is the first significant change, and that is this new crossover junction. In the future, 
trains heading north that are still on this line will use this crossover to switch to the track on the left. Which means that the track that this train is on will in future be used by trains going towards Port Botany. However, as you can see from the rear of these signals, both tracks can be used in either direction when required. The track on the left has been redesigned, with the turnout to the Galco siding relocated slightly further to the north so that it didn't get in the way of the new crossover. To see how the Botany line looked before most of the duplication work started, you can watch this cab view video that was filmed in July 2022. This is now appearing in the top right and there is also a link in the description below. Now approaching the bridge that takes Stephen Road over the rail corridor, and it was wonderful to see someone capturing this rare working on camera. The Galco siding is actually a loop track and it's now rejoining the Arrival Road 2 line at this turnout, which has been replaced with a new one. We now have our first conventional signal, and the green aspect is our permission to enter the single line ahead and go a little faster too. This new turnout here would lead to the new northbound line, which is currently under construction, and also to this line that our train is on, so creating another crossover junction and giving the Galco siding access from both tracks. This footbridge enables pedestrians to cross the railway from both sides of Banksia Street. And it appears that Banksia Street was split into two when the railway was built. And Banksia Street is also where the single track section currently starts, and it continues all the way to Ewan Street, going over Southern Cross Drive and around the edge of the Sydney Domestic Airport terminal, and in this part of the video you're going to see lots of work taking place to make this double track. So now entering the single track section, and this has become the down botany line. The track bed for the extra line is now very visible on the left. This area is much more residential, with the botany suburb on the left and Pagewood on the right. There has always been space in this part of the rail corridor for a second track, but some ground levelling work was required first. The Botany Line opened in 1925, so it will be 100 years old in a couple of years time, so this upgrade is a nice birthday present. Now coming into view on the right is a golf course, and this is for the Lakes Golf Club, so if you like trains and golf, this could be your new happy place. You can now see lots of rails for the new track, and sleepers too, and with the ballast already tamped it looks finished, or will do when the additional rails are removed. This dark building on the left has wonderful views of both the rail corridor and golf course. I don't think it's residential though, as this whole area is part of the Lakes Business Park. You can see the end of these tracks up ahead, and to the left of them are holes for the drainage channels where they go underground. In this area, groundwork has been taking place to bring the new track bed up to the same level as the existing one, and this looks more or less complete now. Notice the new sleepers on the left. And now coming into view is a new bridge that will take the second track over Mill Stream. There used to be quite a steep drop between the existing rail line and Mill Pond, which is on the left, and this has all been raised in preparation for the new track. This new bridge in the distance will take the second track over the Southern Cross Drive motorway, and the southbound carriageway had to be closed for three consecutive nights in October 2022 to install the two bridge piles. The temporary girders on each side were installed in June and July this year, and this was to allow the concrete bridge construction to take place without closing this road again. So the concrete pause took place on the bridge itself, and you can see glimpses of the new bridge through the temporary girders, and now much more of it from this end. Once over this bridge, you begin to get some wonderful views of Sydney Airport. This ground on the left has also been raised for the second track. 
This original railway bridge that crosses Botany Road is already wide enough for two tracks, and you can see that the concrete track slab and rails are already in place for the second line. Now in view are sleepers and lots of rails for the new track. And as our train slows down, this new bridge over Wentworth Drive comes into view. I'm not completely sure why we're stopping, as the signal ahead appears to be green, but then I'm only the backseat driver. This is looking towards the airport and General Holmes Drive. And this is Botany Road on the other side. Now on the move again, and I was surprised to discover that this Wentworth Avenue bridge was actually completed in June 2018, as part of the West Connex and Airport East Road projects. So this was completed before the Botany Line duplication project had even begun. But with planning for this already in the pipeline, it made total sense to build this bridge for two tracks. As the rail corridor begins to bear to the left, we reach the end of the rails and sleepers for the new track, but the track bed is still very visible. As the track becomes straight again, there will be a crossover junction, and you can see the turnouts for this on the left. The road on the left is Joyce Drive. I wonder who that was named after. And now visible are further turnouts for the crossover junction. Now coming into view is another new bridge, and this one is to cross O'Reardon Street. The construction work on the right is for part of the bridge approach, and you can see that the new track bed has moved from the left side to the right side, and that means that the existing single track will need to be realigned. I've just slowed down the footage, as I have quite a lot of explaining to do. This white structure above the rail corridor is not part of the new bridge, and has been here for a few years. The new bridge is below this, and it's for both tracks. In August 2023, the entire Botany Line was closed for five days, and during this time, the existing single track bridge was demolished, and 20 concrete planks were installed to form the deck of the new bridge. It's 45 metres long and 12 metres wide, and to do this work also required the weekend closure of O'Riordan Street during this rail shutdown. The rail corridor beyond this bridge has been widened by using space between the existing track and the buildings on the right, and this is the reason for the new track bed switching to this side. But to do this required building this retaining wall. Now in view is the final new bridge, and this crosses Roby Street. This is also for both tracks, and the old bridge was removed and this one installed during another 5 day rail shutdown that took place a few months earlier in February 2023. This bridge is 36.5 metres long, and 24 planks were put into place to form the bridge deck. As this track continues to bend to the right, we reach the end of the single track section. Notice the back of this new signal on the left. Our track continues to be called the Down Botany Line, whilst the track on the right is known as the Master Siding, even though it's primarily used for trains heading south towards Port Botany. This turnout has been replaced, it leads to the Run Round Siding, also known as the Cooks River Loop Track, and I reckon this is used to allow trains to pass each other before entering the single track section. As the tracks on this loop line look new, it appears that they will continue to be used following duplication, perhaps to control the order of trains arriving into Port Botany. So now beyond the duplication and upgrade work, so you won't see any further changes now, but this line is still very interesting in other ways, so keep watching. This bridge has the Qantas Flying Kangaroo logo on it, and that's because the road above goes to some Qantas offices.
Although you can't see it, we continue to skirt around the edge of Sydney Airport, and between the airport and the rail corridor is the busy Qantas Drive, which is currently being widened as part of the Sydney Gateway Road project. More on this in a moment. This signal with the four white lights is a repeater for the signal ahead. And here are these signals, and as you can see, all three lines are capable of bi-directional working. The Ron Round siding on the right is now rejoining the master siding line. This part of the airport is used for freight services, and you can see a couple of freight aircraft on the left. The rail corridor is now bending to the right and away from the airport, and a new road is being built on the left, which will provide an additional connection between the domestic and international terminals. And in the distance is a new flyover. This will connect Airport Drive with St Peter's Interchange. This is all part of the Sydney Gateway Road project, which also includes the widening of Qantas Drive and Airport Drive that you saw earlier. Now about to cross the Alexandra Canal, and the new road bridge provides a stark contrast to our rather old and rickety railway bridge. Over on the right is Borrell Concrete, and this has rail access, and it's via the number 2 new yard siding that is now branching off the master siding on the right. So now going under this brand new flyover. And this line branching off to the left is the James Transport siding. This is also a loop track, and it looks like it's not seen a train for a while. From the back of this train, the Borrell sidings are now visible on the left, along with the TT class loco, and you can see these tracks joining the number 2 New Yard siding. The view of the new road flyover to St Peter's Interchange is quite impressive from the back of the train. All the new Sydney Gateway roads will be toll free, and most will have shared paths for pedestrians and cyclists. The Sydney Gateway project started in 2021, and is now about 80% complete, it's due to open in late 2024. And it includes this new road bridge that we're going under, which diverges from the main St Peter's flyover and goes to the International Terminal. So we still have the James Transport loop track, which you can see glimpses of on the left, then the down botany line that our train is on, then the master siding, yep it's still called that, then the number 2 new yard siding on the far right. The James Transport loop track is now rejoining our line, and another track is about to join the number 2 New Yard siding on the right. And it comes from a container terminal, that is between Princess Highway, Canal Road and the new Sydney Gateway motorway, and it has quite a few sidings. But all you can see from the train is its connection to the number 2 New Yard siding, which then rejoins the master siding. And this means that it's back to two tracks. This bridge that we're now going under is for the Princess Highway. And after two sets of sidings, I guess it's no surprise to see a crossover junction, as all departing trains will need to switch over to the down botany line. This is then followed by another crossover, this time to allow trains to switch over to the track on the right, which is now… wait for it… yep, it's finally become the up botany line. And this solitary overhead wire gantry seems to indicate that this part of the line might have been electrified in the past. Our train is now going over Unwinds Bridge Road, and on the left and through the bushes is Tillman Park. This steel Pratt truss bridge up ahead goes over a major rail corridor that is on the southwest side of Sydenham Station. And from this bridge, you get a wonderful view of the tracks and junctions, with the four Illawarra lines straight ahead and the three lines going towards Marrickville veering off to the right. 
Having seen this bridge so many times from Sydenham station, it was fantastic to finally go over it. The tracks now begin to gently bend to the left, and this continues for quite a while. On the right, you can see glimpses of Marrickville Road, and behind these bushes on the left is Fraser Park Football Club, and this bridge goes over their access road. Two of the three tracks that you saw verging off towards Marrickville from the Steel Trust Bridge are now appearing on the left. And these are for the T3 line to Bankstown, Lidcombe and Liverpool. And before our tracks bend slightly to the right to run alongside this line, we have another repeater signal. Although you can't see it, an important freight only line is going under us right now, so it's time for another map. So our train is currently here, and this line going under both the T3 Bankstown line and the Botany line is the start of the main goods line. And to the southeast is a triangular junction that connects to the Illawarra lines, so trains coming from both the northeast via Sydenham and the southwest via Tempe can access this line, which then joins our rail corridor at Marrickville, as you'll see shortly. So now back on the Botany line, and these signals control this crossover that goes from the up to the down line. This next bridge takes us over Victoria Road. Now coming into view on the left is Marrickville Station, and on the right is our first glimpse of the main goods line that went under this rail corridor earlier. And now another crossover, this time going from the down to the up line. As our train runs behind Marrickville station, the two tracks from the main goods line join our lines at Marrickville junction. And that is where the Botany line officially ends. Here is a rear view of the last part of this line, along with the main goods line which is now approaching from the left and then the junctions alongside Marrickville station that mark the end of our journey on the Botany line. So our train is now on the down main goods line, with the line on the right being the up main goods line. The T3 Bankstown line on the left was in the middle of a two week shutdown, with work taking place for its future conversion to a driverless Sydney Metro line. And part of this work includes installing these fences, that will provide a physical separation between the goods tracks and this future Sydney Metro line. As the Sydney Metro trains are driverless, it is essential that the Metro tracks are protected from any obstacles that would normally be spotted by a driver, and this could include a potential derailment on the goods lines, hence the need for this fencing. This bridge up ahead takes the rail corridor under Livingston Road, and notice the old overhead wire gantry that goes over all four tracks. Yes, this goods line was electrified in the past. This white building appearing above the rail corridor on the left is a new Sydney Metro substation. It's one of five that have recently been built on this line. Anti-throw screen fencing is being installed on all bridges to provide protection for Sydney Metro trains. And you can see these on this bridge that takes Albemarle Street over the rail corridor. This main goods line is part of the Metropolitan Freight Line, and it follows the T3 Bankstown line to just beyond Campsie, and then veers off to the right to serve Enfield and Chilluri Yards. And I have all of this on video too, and once I've added my dulcet tones, I'll upload this to YouTube. So please subscribe and click the notification bell if you haven't done so already, so you don't miss out on this video. Now approaching Dulwich Hill Station, and this bridge before it is for Wardell Road. 
you can now see the new aerial concourse that connects this station with the L1 light rail stop on the right. And keep looking right to see an Alstom Citadus tram at this stop. The L1 runs on an old goods line that used to go to Roselle and Darling Harbour and in the past this line continued west, running behind the Jack Shanahan Reserve which is on the right. And this bridge now appearing used to carry this old line over Terrace Road. And where these old rails are is where that old line used to join this rail corridor. From the back of the train you can see a little bit more of the old track bed behind the rails. And that's where our little railway adventure comes to an end. Do like this video and if you have any comments or questions please leave those below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. And for perks such as early access to videos consider supporting me on Patreon via the link in the description. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video soon, bye for now.